Hello and welcome to the Quincy Access Television Studios. I'm Mark Crosby. Thank you for joining us for Good Deeds, a look, a quarterly look at your registry of deeds. Here to talk about uh, all that the registry encompasses is the Registrar of Deeds. That would be Bill O'Donnell. Bill, welcome back. Well, Mark, thank you. And again, thanks uh, to Quincy Access for, for televising this and, and just spreading the word about, as I say, an arm of government many people don't know about, but the Registry of Deeds um, involves many things. But the biggest asset most of us have are our homes, and that's what the Registry deals with principally. Both recording and, um, well, maintaining records on. Yes, uh, you know, the, the Registry of Deeds uh, has been uh, in Norfolk County uh, since 1793 when the county was established. And uh, the mission is probably the same as it was in 1793, is that you, you know, record the documents uh, accurately, securely, efficiently, and you make them accessible to the public so that um, various, um, you know, residents can rely on them, but also the real estate economy, the real estate sector, you know, people that are doing title searches so that when someone buys a house or someone's developing developing commercial property, um, the mission of the registry uh, lends to um, creating some stability so those things can happen and, and there are records that people can rely on so that title can pass from not only one person to one person but generation to generation. We should mention, and we will get to it, uh, the means of access has changed greatly in all those years. Well, yes, clearly the delivery of services has changed. Um, we still print books, um, and, you know, uh, we're one of the few registries in Massachusetts, there are 21 registry districts that still print books, so if people want to do it the old-fashioned way, we still print the books, we still print the indexes. But uh, with the advent of the internet, uh, clearly um, the online research, uh, Norfolk County uh, is back to 1793. Uh, all our images are back there, so if you go on our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, um, you can d do some research, you can uh, look up the information. If you enter book one, page one, you can look at the first deed, which was from Foxborough. And uh, if anyone wants to get a little bit more information on how to do it uh, on October 23rd, which seems like a long way from now, uh, at the Registry of Deeds from 4.30 to 5.30, we're having a computer seminar. And it's sort of geared to anybody. You could be a real estate professional. Uh, we have real estate professionals that come to that. We just have regular folks that just want to learn, um, uh, you know, how to, you know, use their computer skills and access the computer to look up some of the information so um, you know the as you say the delivery of the services it's more internet driven it's more speed driven uh, and I guess the registry simply had to evolve over time I, or with y yes or yeah kind of uh, I would say uh, evolve with what was going on in society and um, you know for instance um, when I first became registered, there was no talk of electronic recording. Electronic recording is now a process. It's been authorized by the federal and state government where a document, a closing can take place here in Quincy and the documents are transmitted over the internet uh, for recording at the Registry of Deeds. So they don't have to drive, they just go online and look up to make sure there are no uh, attachments coming in or any liens at the last minute, and then they transmit the property. So the Registry of Deeds is just kind of reflecting what's going on technologically in the world, and also the institutional users, whether they were the banks or the lenders or the lawyers, um, they wanted uh, more speed. They want, they, they've come to grow to rely on speed. Maybe our society is too fast at times, but um, at the Registry of Deeds, we've sort of tapped into what's going on in, in, you know, in our society. And, and um, the modernization initiatives that have taken place at the Registry of Deeds didn't happen overnight. We have a great team at the Registry. There's no I in team, as Sheriff, the late Sheriff Cliff Marshall used to say when, uh, uh, you know, when he had a few um, matters. And, uh, I, I remember that because there is no I in team. A lot of the advances and a lot of the modernization initiatives, uh, we've got a good team at the registry and we've, we've put those modernization initiatives into place. One of the things that we address uh, every time we sit down is the real estate, the current real estate activity, and then look back a bit. There will be uh, graphics, uh, and I should mention both countywide and in the city of Quincy as well. There will be graphics on screen that uh, will guide folks uh, through the stats. 
Sure, and, and, and you know the first stat, and, and, and you know to kind of generally give it, uh, and uh, I could tell I'm getting the uh, put the glasses on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time stops for no one. Uh, but countywide, over the last six months, the document volume is clearly down, and and we've looked at six months from January 1st to June 30th, uh, 2017 to 2018, and you know you see it in the deeds recorded, uh, you see it in the mortgage that rec that are recorded you see it in the homesteads that have been recorded the document volume is down for instance uh, countywide over six months uh, 74,461 documents re were recorded in 2017 uh, versus 67,955 over that same six month period uh, for you know that's uh, 6,506 documents down um, and the percentage is is down nine percent Qu Quincy uh, total documents re re that were recorded during that six-month period was 7,293 in 2017 to 6,418 uh, in 2018 over that six-month period. That's down uh, 875 and again down, um, you know, 12 percent. When you see total deeds uh, in, in countywide, it was 8,866 um, in 2017. In Quincy, it was 687. But it's 617 in 2018 in Quincy and 8,504 uh, countywide. So countywide, it's down 4% and, and Quincy was down 11%. Now, that doesn't mean there's not a lot going on. It's just document volume. You can see it. And I think one of the reasons um, document volume over those six months period is uh, down is we're, we're still being told, and it, it seems to repeat itself every time I've come here of, of late, is that there's no inventory. The brokers say there's no, there's just no, uh, this re reduced housing inventory. There's nothing really there to sell. And, um, and maybe the other reason uh, you've seen mortgages go down is the interest rates have crept up and the Federal Reserve may increase uh, interest rates some more. Uh, for instance, over that six-month period in 2017, there were 13,260 mortgages recorded countywide. There were 28 communities in Norfolk County, including Quincy. In 2018, it was 11,981. Uh, that's down 1,279 mortgages or down 10%. And Quincy kind of mirrors that. There was 1,378 mortgages recorded in 2017. Um, in 2018, 1,225. Again, down 11%. And, uh, Again, I, I think it's it's because there's less activity, there's less purchases taking place because there's less inventory being sold, and the interest rates have crept up. Where where you know people who are refinancing maybe have refinanced a few years ago when the rates are low, and and they're not finding these this increasing uh, rate environment we we may be in uh, to be that attractive that they want to refinance. Um, I, as far as uh, foreclosures, and I, I know we, we, we bring that up, and, and, and again, the, the quarterly statistics, just to give you, to tie that in, I know you have some statistics there, um, but, uh, in, you know, countywide, there was 39,645 uh, documents recorded April, May, and June of this year, the second quarter. Right. Uh, as opposed to 30, 30, um, 37,314 were recorded this quarter, I'm sorry, 39,645 last year, okay. same quarter. Again, down 6%. In Quincy, it's down as well. There were uh, 3,289 documents recorded during the second quarter of this year versus 3,786 documents last year. So uh, again, the trend was down uh, in the second quarter, uh, maybe a little bit more up compared to the first quarter because again, the second quarter entails April, May, and June, which are traditionally, you know, uh, where sales are taking place with the spring. Uh, as far as notices to foreclose, and again, um, anyone that is struggling with foreclosure, uh, we've partnered up with, uh, you have a great organization here in Quincy, uh, the Quincy Community Action Program. Right. Uh, we also uh, have partnered up with Neighbor Works of Southern Massachusetts. Um, and uh, if you go to our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, uh, we have links to the Attorney General's Office, which provides some assistance. But if you're struggling with foreclosure or you get a, a notice to foreclose, seek 
the counseling. They, they, they help people. They give people advice not only on the process, but also on uh, financial literacy and, and, and trying to, you know, put together budgets and, 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 and uh, you know, try to make some, uh, you know, improvements in, in that regard. But uh, countywide, um, as far as uh, notices to foreclose, there were 362 uh, in 2018 over the six-month period versus 304 in 2017. That was a 19% increase. The good news in Quincy as far as notices to foreclose, which is the first part of the process, um, is that it was relatively flat. There were 32 notices to foreclose in, in 2018 and 34 in 2017, so they, it actually went down a little. Uh, but the not notices to foreclose are the beginning of the process. The, the foreclosure deeds are actually down. Uh, which is good news, but when you see notices to foreclose going up, that means the first part of the process is starting. And, um, you know, when you see numbers I increasing, a 19% increase, it means your neighbors, there are neighbors out there that are still struggling, and uh, uh, people should be aware of that and, and certainly seek the help of a Quincy Community Action Program or a neighbor who works at Southern Massachusetts or the Attorney General's office. Get some help uh, early on in the process. One of the slates I'd like to get uh, on the screen is showing foreclosure activity from April 1st through June 30th. And if we could get those up, uh, we will go over those as well. But uh, countywide, 48 foreclosure deeds filed during the second quarter, as opposed to uh, 78 during the same period in 2017. So it looks like a 38.4 percent decrease. This is again countywide looking at April 1st. On foreclosure deeds. Correct, yes. on foreclosure deeds. That, which is the end of the process. What people don't realize is the only involvement of the registry of deeds in foreclosure is by law. If someone is foreclosed upon or the process starts, the bank or the lender files an action in court. And by law, that action in court, the notices to foreclose, get recorded at the registry. That is our only involvement at the registry, the notices to foreclose. But we've used that as an opportunity, as I said, to get people some help because that's the first part of the process. The next involvement at the registry of deeds when it comes to a foreclosure is the foreclosure deed, which is, you know, the process, um, you know, the bank bought it back, there was an auction, and uh, suddenly the foreclosure deed, whether it's the bank that bought it back or, you know, some third party that bought it, the deed gets recorded. So, um, you know, uh, that's why we try to involve ourselves. We're trying to get the people help at the beginning. But yes, that's consistent. The stats you're, you're, you're putting up there are consistent that the foreclosure deeds are down, but the notices to foreclose are up. And as folks can see, uh, 194 notices to foreclose, which again, the first step in the foreclosure process were filed during the second quarter of 2018 compared to 160 during the same time period in 2017. Yeah, and that's count yeah, countywide. But we also have Quincy numbers, and those will be up next. Again, looking at the same period from April 1st through June 30th. Six foreclosure deeds filed in Quincy during the second quarter of 2018 compared to five during the same time period in 2017. 19 notices to foreclose filed during the second quarter of 2018 compared to 17 during the same time period last year. Yeah, it, it's not as pronounced in Quincy as far as the notices to foreclose. I mean, you have a very vibrant community, a hot market, you know, Quincy's a hot market. Um, but, you know, even if there's one notice to foreclose in a community, you know, that's uh, one family that's struggling and, and you, you'd like to see them hopefully get some help uh, because be, but there, by the grace of God, go all of us. It could be a, a you know a sickness. Uh, it could be losing a job. Uh, you know, it could be something that that could happens. Be an, an accident. An accident, and uh, you know, suddenly you know you have struggles, and you know part of the struggle is to keep yourself uh, paying the mortgage and staying in the house. And we all talked about um, the price of homes now. So certainly. Well, that 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 has, that has come <laughs> up, and again, it, it's skewed because we. Um, we, we lumped the commercial with the residential, but, uh, you know, uh, again, I should mention uh, the price of property in general. Yeah, oh, sure. In, in, in the six-month period, the average sale price, commercial and residential, in 2017 was over 720000 countywide. In over 2018, that same six-month period, January 1st to, to uh, June 30th, it's uh, over $904,000. That's like a 26% um, increase. And... Uh, you know, Quincy has seen an even more incredible leap in 2017. Again, 
commercial and residential, and it gets skewed because there's a lot of you know commercial activity as well here right. in Quincy. Uh, it was over $580,000 in 2017, and in 2018, over $929,000. That is a plus almost $350,000 increase or 60%. You know, it's just, um, yes, prices are going up. And again, some of it is what we talked about earlier. There's reduced inventory. Um, there's a hot market. People want to live in a community like Quincy. Um, and and uh, um, so, uh, you know, um, th th there's some good news for people when prices go up, but it's also, it shows how tough it is for, say, a first-time home buyer to try to get in that market. Of and course. we hear antidotally the stories about, you know, you know, five bids coming in and, 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 you know, things going over asking because, again, the lack of inventory, lack of housing inventory. And folks here in the city of Quincy noticed that a lot of apartments a lot of condos are being built. There clearly is a demand. We just talked about it. Yeah, and, and again, you know, people don't invest millions, um, you know, commercial people that are looking at things without, you know, having some type of, you know, hopefully, you know, sound uh, business judgment and, and, and using past experience to say, you know, this is the type of project that we can make a go of it. So, uh, you know, clearly they're looking at factors like, real estate inventory, the demand is, you know, a community that, that people want to uh, live and work in. So uh, these are all the factors that are going into these projects that we see not only in Quincy but around the county. We mentioned electronic recording. Just a, a fact here that I'd like to share with you or that uh, your registry shared with me. Approximately 45 percent of recorded land documents recorded electronically are recorded each week at the registry. Yes, um, recorded land, uh, there's two types of lands at, at the registry. Recorded land, uh, which is about 80% of Norfolk County and registered or land court land. So the stat you uh, cite is kind of reflecting uh, the acceptance of electronic recording and the comfort level that the players, such as the attorneys and the banks, are having with electronic recording, that suddenly we're, we're getting more and more um, documents coming electronically. When we first started, it might have been 10%, but there's becoming such an acceptance. Now, I love when people come by the registry. I welcome people at the registry. We have a very welcoming place. Um, but a lot of people, um, they'd rather take the virtual trip from Quincy or Bellingham or Brookline to the registry than to, you know, spend time in traffic and, and recording and, and doing it there. And sometimes, I know the attorneys like doing the closings at their office because sometimes there's last minute changes that need to be made um, and, and there are factors and, and they, you know, sometimes you'd rather do it in your home office than, 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 than at the registry. Now, the land court, uh, we are one of the few registries uh, uh, doing uh, electronic recording. Uh, we're doing a pilot program. It's been authorized by the state legislature. And you can also see the percentages growing on the land court side, where more and more uh, of the lawyers in the institutions, such as the banks and, and mortgage companies, are now recording electronically on the land court side. So uh, again, that's an advance in technology. Uh, it's for the benefit of the, not only the consumer, but the benefit of the users of the registry. And it reflects sort of the technology, you know, the, in society, everyone wants things fast. Again, I said that earlier, for better or worse. And uh, this is a way for documents to get recorded uh, almost immediately from when the closing takes place. And the brokers like it. If they're doing a closing at the office, used to be you couldn't have the checks released till you knew it was on record. Now there's some, you know, instantaneous, almost almost instantaneous recording of the documents and, and the checks can get dispersed right at the uh, home office of that attorney where the closing is taking place. Amazing. Yeah. Talk about mortgage discharges because that's important. Uh, yes, uh, we all have to borrow money and uh, when you borrow money the bank records a mortgage at the registry and we went over some of those stats and they do that because you know, uh, they want to lend you money, but they're, they're also a profit-making uh, institution. And if you don't pay them back, they're going to use uh, language in that mortgage to foreclose on you. Uh, but when you do your part of the contract and you pay back the mortgage, there's a discharge. It's called a mortgage discharge, which is a one or two page document that tells the world, hey, that mortgage has not only been paid off, it's been recorded at the registry. So what we're seeing 
and it's 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 less so, but it certainly happened. Uh, in, you know, there was a lot of busy economic times uh, in, in in around 2003, 2004, 2005. Tremendous activity, uh, and sometimes people are so busy uh, handling the volume, they're not doing what they need to do. And, and especially some of the bigger banks, the bigger lending in institutions, weren't re recording the mortgage discharges. Uh, sometimes they sent mortgage discharges to the consumer, not making clear that, hey, consumer, you have to take this to the registry to make sure it gets recorded. So it's very important that your mortgage discharges find their way to the registry and get recorded. And what you can do is you can check. Um, you could check yourself. If, if you come to our computer seminar, you could, you know, we teach people how to check their mortgages. Um, and you want to make sure, not only, you know you paid it off, you just want to make sure that that discharge document has been recorded at the registry, which tells the world it's been paid off. Now, uh, if you find yourself in need of a mortgage uh, uh, discharge, I always say you have, you know, great community banks. Uh, you get the Colonial Federal with Mike McFarlane down, down here in Quincy. You got, there's a lot of cooperative banks out there in, in, in around the county, a lot of local banks where they give you good customer service. If you went in and said, hey, uh, the closing attorney says I need a mortgage discharge. I paid that off 20 years ago. They would look up their records. The vice president's probably around the corner. Sign off the mortgage discharge. Just make sure you take it to the registry. Um, again, the filing fee is set by the state legislature of uh, $76 on the registry side. Uh, $76, uh, $76 on the registry side, $75 on the land court side. Make sure uh, you bring that document in. Uh, but the trouble is some banks have merged, some banks have gone out of business. Uh, we forget that uh, in, the, in the 1990s some, some banks went bankrupt. Well, we have a document uh, at the registry uh, on our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, where has my bank gone? And it gives you uh, state and federal contact information, whether it's the Mass uh, Division of Banking, um, but there are federal and state contact information where you can find out where your bank's gone. And, hopefully you know then start tracking it down so you can get your mortgage discharge and we do have a phone number or it will be on the bottom of the screen momentarily to the mass division of banks and that is 617-956-1501 yes and, and as i said uh, that's uh, at the state level uh but uh, if you go on our website again we have state and federal contact information again to help the consumer uh, try to track it down now some people hey uh, you know um, that's why we have a customer service center uh, you know i know some people want nothing to do with the computer have nothing you know n no interest in learning uh and, and and i can respect that if you want call our customer service center at 781-461-6101 and you can ask them you know hey can can you run my name uh, you know, have my mortgage has been discharged. Or you can check uh, our website. We go around to all the communities, including here in Quincy. Uh, Mayor Koch and his staff are nice enough to let us, you know, set up office hours uh, uh, at Quincy City Hall where we bring our computers and um, we answer people's questions, uh, try to provide information on issues like Homestead, but also help look people up look people's records up to see, hey, your mortgage discharge has been recorded, so you don't have to worry about it. Or if your mortgage discharge wasn't recorded, you know it's been paid off, you better track that down. So come by um, you know, one of our office hours or call our customer service. Uh, or if, you, if you're out in Dedham, come by um, 649 High Street and uh, say, go, hello. You go, come, say hello and, uh, and, and come by the customer service center and they'll help you out. You mentioned the Homestead Act just a moments ago. Talk about that, and of course, this is protection for the homeowner. Yes, and, and I'd like to think um, Quincy Cable, and, and, and I know we're always talking about the Homestead when we go out talking to the community groups that invite us to speak. Um, I think a lot of people have already put the Homesteads on, which is why some of these numbers are down. You see the Homestead numbers are down, again, reflecting the fact that you know there's less sales taking place. But the reason people put a Homestead on, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's in the state statute. So your state representatives and state senators write this language in to protect people. And uh, it applies to someone's principal residence. It ha it, you can only record a homestead uh, if you have a principal residence, and you can only record it on your principal residence. And it doesn't prevent some people from be getting in trouble. 
And it doesn't prevent some bad things from happening. If you don't pay your taxes to the city of Quincy, they can take the property by tax title. If you don't pay uh, the bank your um, loan on your loan, they can re you know re you know file a, a foreclosure. And uh, having a homestead doesn't stop that. But there are other instances where the homestead does protect property. Uh, what the homestead does is if you have it recorded, it prevents the for sale. Uh, for instance, you might be driving your car and think you have a lot of insurance, $100,000 worth of insurance on your car, but you hit someone and they have a $400,000 case. Well, your insurance company is going to turn that hundred over, but they still have 300000 The injured party is going to be chasing you. Correct. And they're still going to chase you no, no matter whether you have a homestead or not. But they, having a homestead means they can't force the sale of your home. They're still going to chase you for that money, but they can't force the sale of the, the home. And I think that's very, very important. So uh, we started the, the show saying... Uh, for most people, the biggest asset is their home. And the legislature, your state reps and senators, have put this law in so people should take advantage of it. So it is automatic, however, the total dollar value is not. Yes, well, it, it, it was automatic um, on March 16th, uh, 2011. So that was the first time in Massachusetts that you could get an automatic homestead. The, before that, the only way to get a homestead was to record a homestead document at the Registry of Deeds. So again, thank you legislators. They, they uh, realized a lot of people may be unaware of the homestead, weren't putting the homestead on, and they give you a protection. Again, 125000 but it gets a portion depending on who owns the property. F to my way of thinking, uh, the filing fee, again, set by the, the state legislature and, and the governor, is relatively modest, um, $36 on the registry side, $35 on the land court. And by recording that, you get $500,000 worth of protection. And if you're over 62, and your husband and wife, and each one of you record, you know, we, and again, at the Norfolk Registry, we take one document for the, for the spouses. We don't require them to do two. But each of them declares a homestead. Each of them gets 500000 If Again, the legislature has defined an elderly homestead as if you're 62 and above. And the legislature has extended the homestead to trust, which wasn't the case uh, under case law. So, um, you know, we go to the legislature, you know, explaining, trying to help the consumer. And in this case, you know, you have a great delegation here um, between uh, Ron Mariano, Tacky Chan, Bruce Sears, uh, uh, Representative Hunt has a sliver of Quincy, and uh, Senator Keenan. Keenan. Um, you know, they respond to, to, to things that, and try to help the consumers out. And the good news is they put language in. There was language in that killed your homestead when you refinanced. I know that personally. I kept putting new homesteads on. I had I have three kids, one, one left in college, and, you know, uh, there was language in these documents that terminated homesteads. As of March 16, 2011, again, thank you, legislators, they said, hey, if that language is in the homestead, it doesn't kill your homestead. But again, the legislation went into effect March 16, 2011. So if you did any refinancing or put your homesteads on before March 16, 2011, you might want to look up that, those situations. Good point. In the last two minutes, these okay. shows go by oh, so go, quickly. Yes. I want to wish you a happy 225th anniversary. And I'm holding up a, a brochure that was uh, handed out uh, during the celebration at the registry. Well, first of all, I want to thank Quincy Cable for being there and, 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 and filming it. Um, 225 years, uh, 1793, Governor John Hancock, uh, again, ties to Quincy here, uh, signed legislation starting Norfolk County. Uh, so 225 years to the day we had a celebration. I want to thank uh, Trooper Dan Clark and his wife, Mary, with f fabulous singing. We had over 250 people uh, uh, come by. We had exhibits there. Uh, in this book, there were storyboards, a lot of great history in Norfolk County. It was a fun project to do, and it just shows there's a lot of uh, interesting history in Norfolk County, uh, including the four presidents that were born here in Norfolk County. And uh, it, it was, uh, we had a lot of fun working to, to celebrate Norfolk County's in the registry's 225th year. Well, good job and a lot of work to put this together clearly, and uh, but I, I understand it shows that you were up for the job and so was your staff because a great um, event uh, was the result. Thank you. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. And I want to thank you for coming in and giving us this quarterly update and, of course, welcome you back on a different day 
with uh, more numbers and as we advance uh, to another season. So certainly thanks for taking the opportunity to chat with us. Oh, great. Well, thanks again. Thanks to you, Mark. Thanks to the staff, Quincy Cable, and, and, and thanks to the residents that watch the show. Thank you very much. And thank you at home for watching. You have been watching a program of Quincy Access Television. Please continue to watch QA TV for more locally produced programming.